Yo, what's up? It's your Rumi. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. I do a lot of videos talking about building and launching online marketplace startups like Studio Time that I started. So it's the largest online marketplace and music studios in the world. We have music studios in 35 countries. So it was actually built using ShareTribe, which I'm screen sharing right here. So ShareTribe is a, um, they actually have a no code uh, platform that allows you to easily take your marketplace idea to live, uh, to live marketplace. Um, then they also have a, another um, more, I would say, advanced kind of low code platform, which is called ShareTribe Flex. So Studio Time runs on ShareTribe Flex, and I think it's probably the most customized and largest um, marketplace at scale that runs on ShareTribe Flex. Um, and so I've done a lot of videos talking about that in the past and how I um, customize ShareTribe. Uh, and then I also run Thinkbox, which is a um, low and no code marketplace uh, startup studio. So we also work with others. Um, so if you're looking to start a marketplace and don't have uh, the capabilities to build and launch it yourself or are looking for a team to work with you, um, you can check out the link I'll link down below, um, but we'd love to work with you. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to make this video uh, just discussing ShareTribe Flex and in specific, the admin panel. Um, so I actually haven't seen anyone uh, do a video talking about the admin panel and some of the functionality um, as a Flex Marketplace operator, what you can do. So I'm actually just going to do a, an unedited screen share and uh, I'll actually share the admin panel for Studio Times um, staging or test environment. So that way you can see some of the actual functionality that we have as a marketplace. So as you can see right here, this is a ShareTribe website. So it's sharetribe.com slash, uh, you can see the products and then flex. So they really don't mention a whole lot about the admin um, capabilities. So you can see right here, it says Powerman Admin Console. So you can see like, it basically says, see what your users are doing, moderate the content they create, manage transactions and conversations, right? So what does that actually mean and how does that relate to you as someone that's looking to start an online marketplace startup and what you'll be able to do? Um, or if you're on ShareTribe Go or ShareTribe Flex and you don't know what's possible. All right, so let's just jump into it. So I'm on the, you can see right here, I can toggle between uh, up here at the top left, it's development for studio time and the studio time test. So of course I'm not gonna screen share the studio time actual um, you know, production, uh, the live kind of admin console. As you can see right here, this is uh, the kind of like managed state and the admin console for the studio time kind of staging or test environment. And in short, what that is, is that's where we basically uh, commit our kind of code to uh, an environment which is like, uh, it's exactly what the production environment. So when you go to www.studiotime.io, it's the same thing, but it's where we um, basically test all the features that we're, um, that we're developing or we're trying to replicate any kind of bugs, um, anything like that we do on our staging. So that's what we use our staging for. So as you can see right here, there's like the home and then the manage and then the build. So the manage is the actual kind of admin functionality. So you can see right here, there's 221 test accounts and it's basically, um, and the order is in most recent. So as ShareTribe Flex Marketplace Operator, this is what you'll see. So as users sign up, you'll just see all the users kind of down. So when you click on it, then you can see all the information, right? So you see their user avatar um, and then you'll see their username and then their email right here. You can email them, but that's not through your marketplace. It's actually just opens an email uh, client. You can see their listings, transactions, all the reviews that are associated with them. And then up here, um, you see like one listing on the top right. You see the join date. Um, then you see like their bio, the name, their Stripe ID um, for payments, or sorry, for payouts if they're a studio. And then you see their unique user ID. Now the user ID comes in handy because you can uh, basically use like a URL, like a backslash and then uh, basically paste it in there on the live production. So that way you easily be able to see their user profile on production. Then we go down, we see some of the public data. So we have like email verification, of course, on our, to verify our users. We actually um, have a phone uh, verification for SMS and you can see if it's verified. Um, and then we, that's my phone number, so we'll just scroll down. Um, but, uh, so we'll go up here, right? So this is a basic kind of user information that you can see for all users um, that sign up for your Flex Marketplace. And of course, this is specific to Studio Time, but this just gives you an example of the kind of like the main admin um, kind of layout, and then some of the data and some of the functionality. 
So of course, as a user, you can add a listing. So you can see right here, I have a listing, right? So how we actually see the listings is we click on listings and then we come over here. So here's all the, the listings that are in the most recent order also. So you can see we have like 39 on our studio time staging. So we'll go over here to the test, right? So here's a test uh, user listing. So here's the, the avatar, user avatar for the user that's associated with that listing or that created it, which was the user before, which is me, right? Here's the number of transactions. So you'd be able to click and see all the transactions and all associated data, but we're on the main listing state. So we'll kind of stick to this. So you see like the title, the description, the listing ID. So just like users have specific IDs, um, all listings have a specific user ID. Then we have public data, which this basically means that it's displayed on the um, listing or the studio profile. And then here's all the different rates that the studio uh, identified. And then um, here's some kind of like fields that we can actually kind of edit and change. So for instance, if you want to change these, we can for them. Um, we have like quick reply tags on studio time listings. So we could actually um, force changes to fault. So that way it wouldn't show this if we wanted to. Um, and then we have uh, just like the some other kind of data down here that's associated with each kind of listing. And once again, this is all, um, you know, of course, like test uh, or staging environment, but, and this is all test data. So we also have like private data. So this is data that for instance, um, like you can see right here, say for instance, if you wanted to collect insurance information or ID um, information, um, any kind of very specific, like sensitive information that you wouldn't want to display publicly, but you wanted to capture that when someone's creating their listing, you could actually capture that and then you could see it right here um, on the admin panel, yet you wouldn't display it to public listings. Um, here's some kind of like metadata. So this is, um, for instance, for premium, we could like, you could at, well, I'll kind of explain this, right? So this is, this is actually how we handle uh, pop or displaying a studio as premium verified. We, may, we can manually add a field right here. Um, and basically uh, this, it's like a string value. And then with these, then that like populates a tag or some kind of specific information that we want to add to a listing. So if you're a developer, of course, this is fairly straightforward and I probably didn't do a great job explaining it. But if you're not, um, basically you can add a lot of information, um, data fields um, or tags or whatnot to your listings manually right here through the admin panel um, and kind of choose how to handle that. So we'll go up here to transactions. Um, so yes, we'll click on that. So here's uh, something where we're going to jump into. So this is something that you're going to spend a lot of time on as a marketplace operator. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time here on the admin panel. So you can see these are all sorted by most recent also. But here is, and you can see the main states over here. So um, the main states of transactions um, are going to display, which is super helpful. So you can see like a declined uh, booking request. This means it's completed a decline. This means um, down here, you can see it was like offline payment, um, but it was a booking. Uh, you can see canceled um, and these expired and inquire means uh, a message. So there's a lot, the, all of the, by the way, all of these different, they're called transition states or states of transactions are specific to your marketplace. So we actually have a flow, for instance, on studio time for bookings with offline payments. Um, that doesn't mean it's platform slippage. We actually want to account for that and allow that in some cases. So that's why it says offline payment on here. So you can change the transitions um, as you want. So you could say like, uh, for instance, you could say like completed um, and you could, if it, you wanted it specific like completed, um, but service not provided or whatnot, right? So you can change all these transition states and I'll probably do a whole nother video talking about that. Um, but I just want to mention uh, what these kind of different labels are for right here. So let's just click on one transaction so you can see it, right? So this is what you'll be able to see for each individual transaction um, as a marketplace operator uh, that happens between two users on your marketplace. So here's the two users over here. So of course it's associated with the listing, which is this kind of like black cat music, right? So this is of course like a test kind of listing for black cat music would hypothetically be the studio. So you can see the status right here, which I mentioned is the kind of like the label. So that's declined. Um, here's a timeline for all the different transitions, which comes in, um, this is very useful. So you can kind of see like a quick summary. Um, you can add like seats. So that's just different uh, variables you can add to the bookings. You can see the transaction ID. 
which this also like populates in Stripe on your Stripe panel. So this is great for troubleshooting or easily kind of finding uh, out anything you need associated with this transaction. Um, the transaction process, what, what this refers to is um, basically how you create a specific transaction for your marketplace and configure it uh, using Flex. So that's a whole other video um, that I can talk about the transaction process, but that will be right here. So that way you can see what transaction process users initiated uh, and used for that booking. And then something that's going to be super helpful is just to see what did the customer pay and what did the provider um, receive, right? So you can see the actual booking breakdown. So we just have like units right here. But for instance, we would see like the hourly rate and then you see that right here and then the quantity of two hours. If they added an engineer, if they added any other kind of services or if they had any kind of discounts or anything, that would actually populate right here on this breakdown and you'd be able to see that as a marketplace operator. Now, you don't have to look at it all the time, but it does kind of make sense to um, definitely go through and make sure that everything kind of checks out and you don't have any bugs or errors on this. And if you do have any issues, um, say for instance with a booking and you need to handle something from customer support, you can easily see what the customer paid and then what the provider received right here. And then, of course, here is where you see all the activity. So this is the actual kind of user messaging. So this is like skip payment, but they submit a request, which then populates this message. Um, if the user sent any messages, yes, you'd be able to see the exact messages they send right here. Um, so I'm assuming probably why a lot of people don't do any sharing about, you know, what's possible in the admin panels is due to kind of uh, compliance issues and um, and whatnot, but yes, you can see the messages, of course, uh, as an admin operator right here and monitor them and then see all the activity. Um, here's some kind of like protected data that might be associated with that transaction. So as you'll see, there's quite a bit um, that you can see as a marketplace operator on the admin panel using ShareTribe Flex. So you can see all the users, all their, uh, you know, any of the data that um, is associated with their account. Um, you can see all the listings, all the transactions associated with it. And then you can also see all the reviews that were left. So we'll click on this right here. So let's just see. Okay, so good. This is just like placeholder text. So um, here's two users. This is, of course, uh, with the transaction. You can see the transaction ID it's associated with. And then we have like a, re a review ID that we can see on the admin panel. And so this is where all the reviews kind of populate right here. So once again, um, this is basically a, just a kind of um, a brief unedited video tutorial that hopefully gives you some idea of if you're looking to build a Flex, a ShareTribe Flex marketplace, or you already are uh, a Flex, a ShareTribe Flex marketplace operator, and maybe you don't know like uh, exactly what's possible yet because you just got started on ShareTribe Flex. Um, hopefully this just gives you an idea of just some of the different kind of um, data that you can see as a marketplace operator. And then some of the things that you'll need to be able to do as a marketplace operator. Because as you know, um, or you probably uh, are going to know as a marketplace operator is that, you know, the marketplaces definitely take a ton of admin um, and, and a ton of support. Um, and a lot of, uh, you're going to need as much functionality as possible through your kind of share tribe, um, the, your admin console right here. So anyways, um, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any kind of questions about uh, share tribe flex, as far as like what's possible from the admin operator side, definitely leave a comment below. I try to answer all the questions um, that are asked in the comments and make other videos based off of, you know, what you want to um, see next. And I will do a lot of other um, videos based around uh, share tribe flex, um, for instance, how to actually build some of this functionality. Um, some of the things like the transaction processes, um, how to kind of change some of that. Um, I'll do some other videos another time in that. But anyways, hopefully you liked this uh, video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and hit the subscribe because it keeps me motivated to make these videos. Until the next video, see ya.